Welcome to Everyday Linux User. Today's video is about KDE. So today I'm going to be taking you through the KDE desktop. Um, I'm using Endeavor OS for this. Uh, I installed the KDE version. Uh, but this is nothing to do with Endeavor OS. This is all to do with KDE. So I'm going to take you through some of the system settings. I'm going to show you about activities, uh, workspaces, um, widgets on your desktop. We'll go through some of the tools like KDE Connect. And uh, yeah, so let's start. The first thing we're going to start with is activities. So I've set up in the top left corner that the activities window is open. So I've created three activities. Uh, and before we start that, um, I'm sure many of you already know, but in Linux you have this concept of a virtual workspace. So you can see I've got a workspace here, and if and this is the only window I've got open, which is OBS, which is used to record uh, the, the video. So I, I can have that app over here, and then over on the second tab, I can have Caden Live. And then on the third tab, I might have um, uh, Discover open, because I'm, maybe I'm about to install some more video editing software. And I can, of course, have multiple applications open on on one tab, so I could have a terminal open here as well. We'll just push that to the side like that. And now I can use each workspace um, as a separate desktop. So I can go over here, you can see I've got OBS here, I can go onto the second tab, I've got um, Caden Live as a second workspace, and on my third workspace you've seen that I've opened Discover and a console. So that's workspaces, and and that's not that's not unique to KDE. That's uh, a, it's not even unique to Linux anymore. They're they're available in Windows now as well. But th they are a, a a feature that's been in Linux for a long, long time. So that's nothing new. So KDE does something extra. It's got this thing called activities. Now to understand activities, I'll show you what I've already got. So. In the top left corner, um, I've got a hotspot that lets me show my activities. And you'll see I've got three. So I've got one for work. So imagine you've got a computer and you're using it. Oops, let's try using the work one first. Uh, OK, so imagine you do, you, you're doing your work from home and you want a really professional looking, plain looking workspace. It looks business like, you know, so uh, over here on the right hand side, I'm showing my memory usage, my hard disk, disk activity, my network speed, etc. Left hand side, I've got a clock, I've got my calendar, and I've got my folders here so I can go into my documents and open my documents of the day and you can see what um, applications are open and I can go and look at them. So that's the sort of thing if you, if you want to share your work desktop and you're doing a Teams call your mates, show me what's on your desktop because you've got Visual Studio open because you're uh, Visual Studio Code because you're a developer. And yeah, so it looks like a nice plain desktop, suitable for work, perfect. But when you're using your computer for your own usage, you might want to have another desktop. But you've got family around and it's the one that you're, you know, you've shown your wife the family photos or you're doing... Um, planning your next holiday. So we've got the second tab, which is play. And so on here, this is, this is a standard Endeavor background that comes with Endeavor OS, but you can make it something slightly fun like this. You can configure the desktop or wallpaper and you can pick one of these um, like this. So you, you might have something like this for your home, you know, a picture of your beach, picture of your kids and you play your games on here, your Steam and stuff like that, and maybe a game of poker or whatever. But then you want a third tab. You know what I'm on about, fellas, ladies? You know, the one where you got something, stuff that you don't want your wife to see. Like, in my case, Wonder Woman from 1980s. Okay, so this this, this is clearly a joke, I mean, but you can, you can see the point. That's what activities give you. And for each activity, you've still got all the workspaces. So I can have applications here that for this activity. So I have uh, activities across these four workspaces. Uh, and then when I go back to my, uh, to prove the point, let's open Chrome here. And we'll go to Sky Sports. So 
So you're on the Sky Sports website, you're looking at the football score sneakily, you're supposed to be working, you know what it's like. So you've got Sky Sports over here. Well, I can go up here, I can go back to my work. And nowhere on these workspaces is the football. Okay. So, but when I go back to here, you can see that on the last workspace, the football's still there. So that is what activities gives you. It gives you um, a different activity depending on what you're doing. Now, obviously, I've used it in a slightly cheeky fashion, you know, got a work play and uh, not suitable for wife or work. And that's that, that's that's how I've done it. But you can have it um, work, you can have it for gaming, you could have it for um, audio production, you could have it for movie making, whatever your whatever your thing is, you could have different activities for different things. So I'm going to come away from that. Now, there, there is one thing I have noticed, uh, and we'll, we'll move on to the subject of um, desktop widgets. So if I go on to the work workspace, each one of these is a widget. And you can add widgets by right clicking and you can add widgets here. Okay, so uh, there's a, a load of widgets here um, that you can choose from. Uh, so we've got a digital clock. So at the moment I've got an analog clock, clock. So let's add a digital clock in, if I can find it again. There you go. And you right click, enter edit mode, and then you can drag it around, you can make it bigger. And then you can configure it, so you can choose to show background or no background. And you can configure the clock. Uh, so at the moment it's showing the date, uh, it's not showing seconds, so I can do show seconds, apply, and then you can see it's now showing seconds. Uh, you can change your regional settings, you can choose short date, you can choose long date. So long date is like that. Um, yeah, that's that's every widget's got their own configuration settings and you can choose whether to show the background or not but not all of them enable you to hide the background etc some of them don't clearly the clock doesn't have a background therefore it's not showing it uh the, the analog clock only lets you show uh second hands or a time zone if, so if i show the time zone it shows where i am in the world um and that's what a widget is what you will notice is I've got this widget down here, and this shows all open windows. So anyone spot the problem here? I'm on my work activity, but I'm seeing applications for my play activity. So to, pr to prove the point, I'm on work. If I scroll through any one of these workspaces, you won't see any of those open windows. But if I go to my play activity, you see there's OBS and there's Caden Live. So if I close that down now, because I don't need it, I go back to my work, you can see there's now only one application open. So if you're going to do something like this <laughs> and you do want that not suitable for wife um, thing, you maybe don't want that widget. Uh, I'm only showing this for demonstration purposes, uh, not suitable for wife really, I mean, I don't think my wife's going to be that bothered to see a Wonder Woman picture. Um, yeah, so that is um, activities, that is widgets. Uh, so with widgets you can add, uh, you can get new widgets from other places, so you can download um, from a whole host of them, so you can scroll through, you can search, uh, what, what do we want, stock picker? Or stock checker maybe. So there we go. We got Yap stocks or we got stock charts. So let's try and install one. So you just install one. You see it's got ratings, so you can see how other people feel about them. So now to add that to my thing, I go to widgets and it should be here somewhere. Yap stocks. So there we go. Oh, sorry, there was an error. That's uh, not very good. So we'll remove that off there. So <laughs> a bit like the App Store, some of these things are a bit hit and miss whether they're there or not. Okay, so that's what widgets are. That's how you install widgets. Uh, and down here we have a panel. 
So we can customize the panel and enter edit mode. So as you can see, I've got Chrome here, uh, icons only task manager, and I've got, so I can configure the Chrome. So that basically tells you about the application and you can change permissions and stuff like that. But what I could do is I can move, if I enter the edit mode again, I can move that along so it's at the end, or I should be able to. There is a space in the middle, so, but you can see that I could move the Chrome around. I can move any one of these others around. So if I, I can, in theory, if I edit mode again, I can take this one here and I can move Chrome like that. So this is another, so the system tray is a widget in its own right. And you can see the, the items that appear within the, system tray and it lets you amend so in this case like microphone shown when relevant network shown when relevant so it, it depends on what you're doing as to whether it's shown or not you can change this so it's always shown always hidden and that's how that works so you can see i've got two of these virtual workspace thing so I don't really need that one so I can actually enter edit mode and I can should be able to remove it like that um, what if uh, one one panel is not enough well you can actually configure the panel in its entirety so you can see I can drag the panel to the top I can squeeze it like that You change your panel height like that to make it smaller. Or well, I can just do that. But obviously, now that looks ugly, so I need to rearrange it and put it back to what it was before. So we'll make that 44 again. Uh, enter edit mode, and we're going to. drag the panel back down and seem to have we've lost quite a bit of stuff here. Hold on. Uh. You can see it's easy to get into a mess. So you can, if you want, remove the panel entirely. Um, that makes sure so now we're in a situation where uh, we've got no panel at all. That's not very handy. But we can add it back in. Add a default panel. And everything's back to what it was before. So that's your, that's your panels. Uh, you can also um, drag your panel to the side. Like that. So you can have side panel, a bit like Ubuntu. Uh, I've never liked the side panel, I have to admit. So we're going to just drag it back to where it was before. You can also have multiple panels. So I've added an application menu to this one. So you can have the bottom one more of a dock if you wanted more of a dock, and then the top one is more of a um, application menu type thing. So I could put quick launches up here um, for things like Chrome and um, LibreOffice, etc. So that's how panels work. We're going to remove this one. And as you can see, there's buttons along here that are able to change different things. So manage desktop and panels. And it tells you a little bit about what you can do there. Enter edit mode, and we're going to remove the panel. So we're back to what we were before. So interestingly, if I change the panel on this one, no, nope, we're not going to do that. So if I drag this one to the top, like so, we'll exit that. But now we want to 
go to our play, you'll see the panel still at the top. So your your panel layout and stuff like that isn't by activity. It's by um, the um, actual system. So uh, if you have your panel at the top on one, it's going to be at the top of the other and vice versa by the looks of it. So I, I, I like it at the bottom, traditionalist. So that's us back to where we were before. So we're um, at the end of uh, widgets and panels, etc. cetera. Uh, I'm going to go to the play screen because it's a, a nicer visual. And so here we are. This is the, the play one. Let's go into the settings. Every time I scroll my mouse to the left, it moves to the next uh, virtual workspace along. So you can see I'm in the first one. I'm in the second one. If you look at the little box down in the left corner, and then I'm in the last one. So um, my mouse is set to uh, every time you scroll beyond the border of one, it will move into the next uh, workspace. So here we are, system settings, and uh, this is how you can configure some of this stuff. So at the moment, I'm in dark mode. You can turn it to light mode. Uh, I've had to turn off compositing because the um, OBS doesn't like uh, compositing very much uh, in KDE when you're using Wayland. So light mode. Now, I know a lot of people don't like light mode, but um, Trust me, if you're colorblind like I am, <laughs> it's a godsend. Uh, I, I will put it back for those of you um, who prefer not to be blinded by the dark, uh, by the light. Uh, as you've seen before, you can change the wallpaper. Uh, you can do that by right-clicking on the desktop. For some reason it won't do it if I've got that open. Yeah, so right-click on the desktop configure desktop and wallpaper and you can um, pick any of these default ones not all of them came with because as you can see I've got um, this one here Daisy Duke uh, I downloaded that one that was going to be my not suitable until I found the Wonder Woman um, but uh, there's also a Belinda Carlisle one uh, another thing that shows more about me than it does uh, about um, KDE uh, there's this one that you can do, get new wallpapers here. Uh, this is one of the ones from the community of um, Endeavor OS. But the, these are KDE wallpapers. You can, these are installed by default. So I can, you can preview it and then you can install it. And then I should be able to pick it from this list. So if you're worried about the light mode, that's going to really help you out. Uh, this is another Endeavor OS one. So you can get new wallpapers by clicking on there. You can add your own image, uh, click add image, go to your folder, and then just pick the one that you want to use. Uh, you can obviously scale and crop it if it's too small. Uh, other desktop folder setting type things you can do in here. Um, so I'm going to discard all changes. So um, mouse actions. So vertical scroll switches desktop. So if I scroll up with my middle wheel, you can see it went to the left. Uh, left, And if I went down, it goes to the right. Uh, right button is a standard menu like that. So it's a context menu. But I can change this to be anything I want. So I could have the right mouse button show an application launcher as, as follows. You can add more actions. So you could say left mouse button gives me the application launcher so right button like that left button like that 
and you can add as many of these as you you, you like so i'm just gonna leave that because that's quite a nice thing to do because i don't know about you i mean you can i mean you can press the window key and that pulls up the menu like that but if you just want to find an application quickly you can just now left mouse button uh locations uh show desktop folder yeah, so locations uh so if i place panel item home it shows me everything in my home folder like that that is not very pretty at all so files linked to the current activity i haven't got any desktop folder more of what you you want so anything i put in my desktop will now appear on here <laughs> um right so back to system settings uh clicking on folders you can uh choose what clicking on a file or folder does so click on it, it opens them or click it, it selects them instead so it just selects it doesn't actually open them uh, this shows you the most used pages um so appearance settings you can choose your theme so there's four themes here. You can choose your application styles, plasma styles. So if you're like me, you can go like this. And then it's uh, a lot brighter. Or you can have it like this. And it's dark again, and you can go really dark. Uh, oxygen, etc. There's loads more configuration here than you get with some desktops, uh, desktop environments such as uh, GNOME. So, uh, workspace behavior, uh, so general behavior, um, display informational tips on mouse hover. So, if I mouse hover over there, you can see it says Google Chrome browser. So, if I turn that off, and hover you see i get nothing uh, you can change the animation speed uh, again clicking folders opens or selects them clicking in the scroll bar track scrolls one page up or down uh, touch mode uh, if you've got a touch screen uh, discard the changes i've made thus far uh, so desktop effects these are for the people who like um, things to be a little bit snazzy uh so there are some useful things like so you can magnify um useful if you uh for accessibility purposes these ones but down here you got a few more uh that aren't for um accessibility they're just for nice so you've got wobbly windows i can't show this i'm afraid because it, it relies on the compositor i don't think it will work so if i do wobbly windows it's not going to wobble because i haven't got the uh compositor on uh like likewise magic lamp if i minimize it's supposed to do a sort of funnel thing but it won't because i haven't got the compositor running uh but something for you to play with now you'll see why my screen edges do what they do um uh, so if i drag a window to the top it maximizes that's that setting there um windows drag to the left snaps them into place like that Oop, no quite do what i was expecting it's because i've got another setting that's overriding that setting um switch deck desktop on edge always enabled so i can disable that so that now when i snap that to the left it's actually going to snap and you can see that i'm no longer when i go to the left or right i'm no longer switching desktops uh, you'll see I've got these hot spots here. So I've got uh, this one here, it shows Activity Manager. So that's why you get the activities up here. I've got this top right hand one is set to present Windows for desktops. So if I sh show, uh, it's quite possible that it's because the compositor's not on. It's not able to show the all desktops. That's That's what that will be. Uh, which is disappointing because uh, that's quite a good thing to show. So here we are again. So um, yeah, as you can see, you can set these to do different things. So I can use 
the right one to show lock screen, show K runner, uh, do an overview, toggle window switching, etc. So you, you can set these as hotspots. Uh, I'm going to leave that one set. Um, when I put the compositor back on, it will work. Uh, touch screen gestures, same thing. If you have touch screen, but you can use your finger to, uh, on on the screen. Uh, screen locking, you can uh, say how long it is before the screen locks. Um, so it locks after five minutes or, or after waking from sleep. Uh, allow unlocking with a password for five seconds. Um, it's up to you whether you do that. You can lock the screen with um, the Windows key and L or Meta as they call it. And you can change the appearance of the lock screen. Um, so you can pick any one of these. So I could pick Bill and Carlisle. That will upset my wife. There we go. Uh, virtual desktops. Uh, I've got four. You can take it down to two. You can uh, make it more than four. It's, it's up to you. Um, you can do show an animation, uh, show on screen display when switching. Uh, so there's various things you can do there. Um, as you can see, KDE, very customizable. Uh, activities, um, you can see I've got three, yeah, my default one, which is the work one. Uh, I've got the, the play one and I've got not, not suitable for work and for switching. Um, meta and tab switches through activities, meta shift tab. So generally, alt and tab takes you through activities, but meta shift, meta shift tab um, takes you in different directions. So to, to show this, uh, you can see I'm on the um, normal one, the play one, uh, meta and tab takes me to the work one and again and then again and then again. And you can see it allows me to switch all the way through like that. And then you got your recent files as well. Uh, window management. Uh, uh, you can change how windows behave. Window activation, click to focus. You can have various things here. The window follows the mouse. Uh, focus follows the mouse. Uh, focus is under the mouse, etc. Total bar actions, so double click, maximize. You can also have it uh, horizontally or vertically maximize, minimize, show on all desktops. Uh, you can close it, you can do nothing. Uh, so I'm going to have it at maximize. Uh, you can change what happens on the mouse wheel, uh, what happens with left and right clicks, etc. Task switching. Alt tabs, Alt shift tab, uh, back tab takes you through um, your different applications and you can filter it by virtual desktops and activities etc for different shortcuts so for Dolphin um, so in Windows uh, Windows and E key opens Explorer in KDE it opens Dolphin as you can see uh, an emoji selector um, which is meta and a full stop key As I've shown there. Uh, then you've got K-Calc, uh, Spectacle, uh, various different um, various different um, applications under different key switches. Custom shortcuts, uh, K-Menu Edit, and Conqueror gestures, etc. And you've got Start Up and Shut Down. Um, so you can change your login screen. Yeah. Uh, this allows you to choose what to start up uh, automatically when you start KDE. Got background services, these are all the things that are running in the background quite a lot. And then desktop session. Um, so you can Enter the UFE start uh, setup screen after the next restart. That's quite a good feature if if you want to if you need to go in there. Uh, you can show the logout screen. Uh, uh, so when you restore, you can um, have open, um, apps launch um, as they were on the last logout. Uh, when you restore from sleep mode. Or you can start with an empty session. 
search features. Uh, you can index your files in different folders. Uh, you got uh, so you can choose how notifications work within KDE. So, for instance, um, you can have do not disturb mode. You can have only show me critical incidents. And you can say whether they just, uh, so critical no notifications show in this do not disturb mode. Do you, well, if it's critical, you probably do want it to display. Otherwise, uh, define critical. Uh, low priority notifications show a pop up. Uh, normal notifications show over full screen windows. And you can tick and untick these boxes, and they can configure application specific settings as well. Uh, if you want to add new users, you can do that here. Um, online accounts, regional settings, user feedback, and there's all the hardware support here as well. So I want to look at the activity switcher. Uh, Within here, you can see um, I've got my three activities, but what you didn't see is that um, you can configure them. So I've got work set up so that you can switch to it with the Meta and W key. Not suitable for wife or work is set to Meta and it's the apostrophe in the top left corner. It's a very quick key switch if you want it. And then the play one, I've got to uh, meta and P. So to show that in action, let's do that. So we're on the play one. Let's do work, play, not suitable, play, not suitable, play. Uh, play in the game, wife. Oh, look, I'm looking at our family photos. Isn't it nice? Poker, play. There we go. Uh, so a couple more things I want to look at. Let's look at KDE Connect. So there is a tool called KDE Connect. And you can have KDE Connect on your phone, which I have got. And I, I click that. Um, worth noting that the firewall can get in the way of this. So if I find devices, you'll see there's nothing there. And that's the firewall getting in the way. So if I go here and right click and I go into edit firewall settings. So I'm editing firewall settings. And I need to scroll down the public here. And you see there's one called KD Connect. I need to tick that. And that means now when I minimize there, I should be able to go KDE connect. And you can see that my phone is um, available. So I can click that, click pair. Uh, from, from my phone, it's asking me to accept. And now you can see I've got um, the two linked together. So what does that mean? Um, well, uh, imagine you want to find my phone. I've lost it somewhere. It's somewhere in this room. And hopefully you heard that my phone was ringing in the background. I can also use my phone to um, do some remote input. So I'm now no longer using my mouse. I'm using my phone to move the pointer around. So imagine I'm giving a presentation. I can um, use that to point at things on the screen just using my phone. I don't have to use a mouse and try and use a mouse mat and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I can run a command. 
So I can, if I want to, um, I've set up um, some commands. So I can use my phone to reboot the computer. I can use my phone to unlock the screen or lock the screen. Uh, I'm going to see if this works. Hopefully it's not going to cut out the video. So if I click the lock screen here, you can see um, Belinda Carlisle's come up. And if I unlock, it comes back again. So yeah, KDE Connect enables you to use um, paired devices to interact with one another. There are other things you can do. You can share files. Uh, obviously, you need permissions on your phone to do certain things. In theory, you could send text messages and things like that. I've not tried that, and you can share files. I've not tried that. It, it means setting up permissions on your, on your phone, and uh, I haven't done that. Okay, I wanted to show you, um, so I'm on the KDE website now. Um, so this shows you some of the applications that come with KDE. Uh, so KDE is a fully fledged desktop environment. So it comes with absolutely dozens of different tools that make, it uh, should enable to use your computer for most things um, out of the box without having to install other software. Um, the thing I would say is to it doesn't come with uh, Office Suite, but uh, these are native to KDE. So you've got a document viewer, you've got the Dolphin file manager, which is this thing here. If my keyboard shortcut works, it does. Uh, console, which is uh, the console emulator, uh, the, the terminal emulator. You've got a, a zip management, Caden Live, which is what I use for video editing. You've got a text editor, screen capture, KDE Connect, which is what I've just shown you. You've got an image viewer. Uh, you've got a system monitor. Depends on the distribution where you get it all installed. Right? You get Critter, which is digital painting, uh, calculator, wallet management. Uh, you can find files. They've got the Discovery Software Center. Um, I'll show you that now. So I've got this link to Flatpak. So I've installed Flatpak and uh, so you this is a great way of finding applications. So for instance, if I wanted to find um, Office Suites, well, I could just click on the tab down here. You see, th these are all the applications you can install. So Discover is a fully fledged um, package management thing. And once you link it to um, Flatpak as well, it, it makes it a great application. Uh, so um, all these tools here, there's so many, disk burning, compare uh, for um, doing diff, uh, showing differences between files, you've got torrent programs, you've got the music player, um, Elisa, uh, you've got an integrated development environment, you've got games, Kmail, there's just so many to choose from, there's just all this native to um, KDE. So to summarize then, what do I think of KDE? Well, I can understand why it's very popular. It's got loads of tools, absolutely loads of tools. It, it's customizable um, and it's heavily customizable. Uh, what I do think though, um, so the activity is a, is a, is a good idea. Um, I've been a little bit, um, brash with it and you could have it not suitable for husband or you could uh, you sort these activities out the way you want to sort them out it's um i've, I've tried to do it in a light-hearted fashion uh so the activities on top of workspaces not only i mean most desktops you get the the multiple workspaces but to have the activities and the workspaces together i think that's brilliant uh you can customize these panels you get loads of different widgets i mean i think that's great the one criticism I have, and I've always had this about um, KDE, um, well, there's a couple of um, criticisms, I guess. One, it's quite heavy on resources um, compared to maybe XFCE or other lighter weight desktops. It's, it's better than GNOME, and it's more, the fact is, it's more customizable than GNOME, so it hands down beats gnome at this moment in time there used to be a time they never got close to gnome but um i think yeah um kd is probably better than gnome 
these widgets. Let's talk about these widgets. They're a little bit blocky, are they not? Uh, yes, you can customize them. And you can make them smaller. You can make them smaller. And depending on the widget, it depends what you can um, customize about them. But I find them a little bit bricky there. Compared to the XFCE ones, they just don't feel, they, they feel if Disney did desktops. Uh, <laughs> it's, they work, but they're a bit, they just look a little bit clunky. That, that's all I would say. Um, feel free to disagree with me on that. Uh, yeah. But um, all in all, KDE is a worthy desktop environment. And I really like the keyboard shortcuts and the activities, has to be said, it's a, it's a great way to navigate your system. And the fact that you can, uh, I know you can't see it because of the compositor easily, but I can click up there and show every um, application on my um, system that's running and just click the application that I want. Uh, so yeah, it's it's good. And that is the end of the re review of the KDE Plasma desktop environment. Um, I hope that's helped some of you understand some of the um, features of KDE, what, why activities are good, and that's the end of the video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content from Everyday Linux User, uh, hit the subscribe button. And uh, thank you for watching.